Hi, Ryan. This is Alan Cockrell with ABC, former hitting coach with the Colorado Rockies and Seattle Mariners. We'll take a look at your video today. Um, I like your setup. We're in, a, we're in a good balanced position. Those knees are under, inside your feet. You've got your head centered inside your knees. We're in a good position there. We've got good athletic bend in both knees. I think that's a pretty good solid setup. I think you're in a good position to go ahead and get into your load. All right, now when we get into the load here, um, it looks to me like looking at where this ball gets, that we get loaded a little bit late, okay? Getting loaded late causes more mechanical problems, more mechanical breakdowns later on in the swing than anything else. Um, that load has got to be early. It's got to be under control. It's got to be, uh, we've got to have rhythm. Uh, you know, we've all heard, get the foot down, that whole thing. I'm not a big believer that you have to get your foot down and wait, wait, wait for the ball to get there. But it needs to be slow enough that that front stride foot can land softly, okay, and, and not, not be in a hurry and not let that ball get way in here deep on you like it is right here. So what we need to do is we need to spend our time when we're on deck and we need to get ourselves in sync with that pitcher. And we need to make sure that our load is going to be early enough that nothing gets fast, nothing gets hard, the foot doesn't land hard, nothing is, is, is causing us to put us in a position where it might alter some of my mechanics later on in my swing. Okay? All right, now let's talk about what the load does. All right, the load is, is we're, we're gathering weight or energy. To the inside part of this back leg. That's, that's where we want to feel our weight in our load. Okay, now when the foot lands, all right, we're going to take a look at a couple different things. We want to see equal bend in both knees. Okay, not bad right there. I want to see that my hips are square to home plate. Okay, not bad. We're a little quick with this front hip. It's starting to leak open just a little bit, and we saw how, how, how deep this ball got ready, so we know you got loaded a little bit late. The biggest thing that I look for with guys in their load is this stride foot. Okay, When the heel lands and gets on the ground, that's when my foot is down. The back heel has to be firmly planted into the ground. And when I get to that point, I want to make sure that I'm no more open than 45 degrees. As you can see here, you've done a really good job even though we're late getting ready you've done a good job at not making the the um, <clears throat> problem of opening up that front foot so that it really makes your front hip hip leak out of there really quick okay so you've done a good job of that okay now let's talk about the swing itself first move with the lower half lower half gives you direction to the ball it gives you drive through the ball Okay, it's basically, in a sense, it's where our power comes from, is the lower half. I'm going to take this weight that I've gathered into the back side of this, this back leg, or the inside part of this back leg, and I'm going to drive this knee forward, and I'm going to transfer that weight into the inside part of my stride leg. Okay? As that back knee is driving into my front leg, my elbow will drop down into a slot right off my rib cage and my back hip. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Let's see the position that we get into. We get into a pretty good position right there. Okay, I see a, a, I see a good weight transfer into here. I see that elbow has dropped down into the slot, and what I want to see now is I want to see shoulder, elbow, and back hip all in alignment. Okay, that's called a connection. At this particular point, I don't really want to see the hands working ahead of that connection. And the reason for that is if my hands hands work ahead of my connection, I have a hard time getting to this ball that's on the outer half of the plate or the outer third of the plate out here. So at this particular time, I'd rather see your hands in this position. After we get connected, then the hands start to work in front of the body out here to contact. They'll start to work past your center of gravity, which is where the belly button or the, or the belt buckle is, they'll start to work out here in front. Part of what might have occurred right here is because we got loaded a little bit late, you've actually tried to hurry up with your hands 
which is a great adjustment. Most people don't do that. Most people hurry up with the front side of their body. This front foot will open wide open, and that front hip will slide out of there and go to the pull side, and, and we'll end up bringing our hands out and around the ball. So you've actually tried to hurry up with your hands, which is a, is a, very, it's a very good adjustment. It's one you don't see very often. Okay? Now once we get to contact, we can see we got, uh, got the ball a little bit deep, but that happens sometimes. I see palm up, palm down. We're good there. I see head and eyes looking right down the barrel of the bat at contact. That's good. Uh, I think it's important for you to know, Ryan, that if my head and eyes come up out of the hitting zone early, the barrel of my bat's going to fall that. So in a sense, when my head and eyes leave the hitting area, my swing is over. Barrel of bats fall in my head and eyes. So it's a good habit to get into keeping the head and eyes in the hitting zone at least one count past contact just to make sure that I'm getting good full extension through the baseball. Okay? Now once we get to here, because this ball got deep on you, you know, we're having to pull our hands across our body just a little bit. We're not going to get the full extension and the good long full arc of the bat that we'd like to see, but you did a lot of things good to compensate, so um, nice job. But you can see here you start to pull your hands across your body just a little bit, and that's just because the ball got deep. So here's, here's what I'd like for you to do. Um, as a drill, we're going to go all the way back here to where this heel right here plants into the ground. When that plants in the ground, now I'm just going to work on the outer third of the plate. I'm going to put a tee out there even with my front foot. All right, I'm going to throw a ball on it. What we're going to try to do is we're going to try to stay through this ball so that we get a good full extension of my barrel facing the pitcher and then I just want to get a good full long arc. All right, this ball should be driven through the um, second baseman, should be driven into right center field. We always work away because it's, it's, it's the toughest pitch to stay on. It's the toughest pitch to stay through. So uh, timing-wise, mechanically, I need to be at my best in order to hit this pitch the way I need to. Okay? The other suggestion that I have is that you spend all of your time on deck getting yourself in sync with that pitcher so that we do not um, have any timing issues when we go to the plate. We don't want to have to take a pitch for timing purposes, okay? If it's a guy you haven't seen before and you want to see how the ball comes out of his hand, uh, you want to see what kind of movement he has, that's fine. But I don't want to have to take a pitch because I need to get my timing for that particular pitcher. Get your timing when you're on deck so, <clears throat> so that you can be early and slow and soft and land and be in a good position to be able to see the ball as early as you can and put a good swing on it. All right, bud? This is something I think will help you. I want to thank you for coming to our camp, and good luck.